Welcome to Channel 17, the Town of Colony Government Channel. Well, welcome to Meet the Author. My name is Joe Nash. Today we're going to be talking again with Marvin Booby. He is the author of this new book here on municipal seals, you know, those town symbols you see um, for cities, villages, and counties. His new book is called Celebrating the Revolutionary War, Municipal Symbols of a Free Country. Now, his other books, if you remember from last time, he has a whole book on the municipal seals celebrating our Dutch heritage and um, his other one was also on all the municipal symbols, again, town, city, um, village, that had the Erie Canal as a theme. So welcome, Marvin. Welcome back, I should say. Well, thank you very much. Now, your other two books on the Dutch heritage and the um, Erie Canal were kind of thin books. This book is very thick. You got about three or four times as many. I think you told me. You just told me. Yep. This has over 200 municipal symbols. How did you... Um, how did you get the idea for this one after the other two? Well, just by doing uh, the research, you find some that have cannons in them or Revolutionary War heroes. Mm -hmm. So I began to look around at the other states where all the battles took place. And if you look around, um, say, Lexington and Concord, mm -hmm. you're going to find both of those uh, that have their Minuteman symbols. But it turns out there was probably a dozen other communities that participated. Okay. Now, so they all have the symbols in, in their seals. Well, I know that in your other two books, there were more, like the one book was only the Hudson Valley, the other one was just the Erie Canal. This book, you've got municipal symbols all the way from Maine down to North, Maine down to South Carolina, out to Tennessee and Ohio. So you, I think you, the Revolutionary War, sometimes we think was just sort of in New England, but the Revolutionary War and everything, to it, it, you know, the, the range is a lot, the well, geographical a, range, area is a lot. Uh, and it seems to me that there was really no part of the original 13 colonies that were unscathed. Okay. Um, there are people in South Carolina that claim that there were more battles fought there than anywhere else. Where was this? South Carolina. Uh, okay, yeah, there's a lot of South Carolina in here. The other thing that was interesting about this book, before we really get into it, a lot of um, New Jersey is in here. A lot of, we have a lot of... A lot of New Jersey. New Jersey was uh, the crossroads uh, of the revolution by their own uh, mm -hmm. uh, account. Uh, Washington had to evacuate New York City and had to uh, escape from the British across to uh, eventually Morristown and Valley Forge around the, uh, the mountains and the river that provided a barrier. Uh, so it went back and forth and then uh, the battles of uh, Fort Monmouth. Monmouth was fought in New Jersey. Well, you know, like, like I say, we sometimes only think the battles were in the in the uh, New England, but the other thing is that you bring up in the book, it's in the beginning here, and um, we only think there was one tea party, and we only think there was, of course, the Declaration of Independence, but you've included in your book a little bit about there were dozens of tea parties, I mean, dumping the tea into the, and there were, although we do have a Declaration of Independence by the Continental Congress, many, um, I think they weren't states yet, many municipalities or many areas or counties, or whatever, had little declarations of independence is the term. I think you include in here um, the full text of not just the tea, all the tea parties. Again, the, these were some of them. You have, um, I'll just read some of these. The Virginia, the Virginia Resolves, the, the Sheffield Declaration, the Suffolk Resolves, the Huntington Declaration of Rights, and most of these were all, what, precursors to the Declaration of Independence? Exactly. During the eight years of the war, or actually this was the lead up to the war, people's loyalties were being tested and they were asked to, where do you stand on this? Mm -hmm. And then here's the Declaration, and then those people signed it. So by the time the Declaration came along, uh, many of those sentiments in the Declaration mm -hmm. had already been expressed and signed hundreds of times across the colonies. Okay. Let's say, I think we forget about those things. Also, the tea parties. Tell us how many, how many you were able to, uh, I don't want to say verify, how many were there? Not just Boston. I mean, well, there, there probably were um, dozens, if not hundreds. And Boston was one of the most notorious. And because of Boston, 
the British shut down the port of Boston. What happened after that? That was meant to intimidate mm -hmm. the colonies. It had the opposite effect. Uh, we're a nation of coffee drinkers. Yeah. Uh, we began to throw uh, tea uh, away or burn tea in, uh, again, dozens of cities. Uh, one one uh, city that doesn't show up here is, uh, in, is Rhode Island. And Rhode Island uh, didn't show up because they burned the they burned the ship uh, that was uh, uh, enforcing the Stamp Act well, I think, from a couple of years before. So they didn't even ship the tea there. Well, I think in some of these you mentioned, not only not only did they throw the tea over, they actually burned the, burned the, burned they, the ships um, down. Uh, they forced the uh, owner of the ship to set fire uh, to his own ship and burn the entire ship. I know. There's so much more of history, not, not in the history books, I, I guess you could say. Well. The one theme that comes up, and we're going to see many of these symbols in a minute or two, um, you, 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 you call these um, symbols of freedom, and you talk about in the beginning of the book here how in the old days, I guess, towns had to follow certain rules and um, re regiments and the heraldry and the, the kings and all this. But one of the great things about America, with, particularly with these symbols, which we'll see, we're now free, we can do anything we want, put anything on them, and when you see some of these, um, some are very simple, some are very elaborate, some, I mean, tell us about this, why you've chosen to call them symbols of a free country. Basically, the uh, uh, symbols were handed down by the governments from royalty in the past, so we didn't have any choice in them. And many of the early colonial symbols were um, the subjects of the king kneeling before the king, offering the king uh, homage. Uh, so on July 4th, 1776, we overthrew the monarchy. We also overthrew seven to 800 years of heraldry. Mm -hmm. Basically, we said we don't need no stinking rules <laughs> and we can come up with our own. And uh, as we formed a government, the federal government never, uh, by, by intention, I think, never had anything to do with municipal seals. So uh, in effect, we have uh, a U.S. Army College of Heraldry that takes care of the federal government. So when a new department is created, like the Department of Homeland Security, they will draw up an official mm -hmm. heraldic seal uh, for them. But they do not get involved with cities, counties, towns. It's we, the people, who decide our own municipal identity. And most of these, most of these symbols of city, counties, and towns what, the this town, they get together and they just um, come up with it, right? <laughs> they, they get together, either an individual does it, it has to be a governing authority, so it would be the county board of supervisors or the mayor or whoever, and many times what they do is they, they say, you know what, let's just hold a contest. So mm -hmm. they do it like uh, we did the state quarters. Okay. So they hold a contest, and again, we the people then will get to decide. Well, one of these in the book, which unfortunately we don't have to show, but one of them sort of um, shows the the town meeting and how great this, how, how an important part of America that is. Which one? I can't remember now. Which yeah, one that I was. believe this is the town of Danvers, Massachusetts. Okay, Danvers, Mass. And the the symbol celebrates the town meeting as so. a citadel of democracy. And they also they were a part of uh, Salem back in the 1600s, mm -hmm. and they wanted to uh, break away. They wanted to become their own uh, community, their own town. So they sent a petition off to the king. And now in those days it took at least uh, a year to get there, a year to get back. So two years later the answer comes back, no, the king is unwilling. So when they decided to form, uh, uh, to adopt a town seal, later in the 1800s, around uh, 1890 something, they put on their seal, the king unwilling. Okay. So just a very American uh, sentiment. All right, well, the first one we're going to look at on the screen, we'll talk about this while you um, watching at home can see. We're, why don't you talk a little bit about the town of Providence Town, Massachusetts, which is a very interesting one. This is before the Revolution, but it does celebrate the, um, the Mayflower Compact. Exactly. Um, so they claim uh, this is the birthplace of American liberty. And uh, what they mean by this is the, the pilgrims got here and it became very obvious very quickly they had no governing authority. So they drew up a self-governing compact. They all signed it and said, this is how we're going to govern ourselves. 
So right from the beginning on the North American continent, uh, we were self-governing. Uh, and when they went to uh, choose a seal, many cities, towns, villages go back to their original heritage. Mm -hmm. And this one goes right back to the Mayflower Compact. Okay. Now the next one I thought would be very interesting to look at to celebrate some of these themes is um, in from Virginia, and you'll see it on the screen here, is Culpeper County. Tell, what can you say about, um, tell us about that one. It has, it has the liberty or death, the uh, Minutemen on there, and... Um... Well, sure, right after uh, Lexington and Concord, uh, an alarm went out uh, to across the whole colonies. Um, and in Culpeper, um, a group of Minutemen were formed. Um, so they were uh, assigned uh, to protect the, um, the uh, cities mm -hmm. in Virginia. Culpeper at the time was a frontier. So these were frontier men, um, rough looking, and they were assigned to protect Williamsburg. And then eventually they participated in the Battle of Great Bridge, Virginia, which is now Chesapeake. Okay. And they won that battle. I think they lost one, uh, one American versus a couple hundred of the British. The British evacuated Virginia and didn't return to the South with a new strategy until several years into the war. Okay. Like I say, you know, reading this book, and each one of these is um, you know, like a page long or so, they're, they're a combination of little mini history lessons, little mini biographies, and you know, it's really it's pretty, a lot of stuff that, you, like I said a minute ago, not in the history books, I, you don't know. Well, let, why don't you talk a little bit about um, Revere, Massachusetts, obviously, uh, named after Paul Revere. Named after Paul Revere. And, um, and you, this one shows, we'll talk about what's on here on this one. Uh, Paul Revere um, is shown on his horse. He's going to be uh, going out to warn uh, that the British are on their way. They're on their way to uh, capture supplies. They're on their way to arrest John, Adams, uh, John Hancock and Sam Adams. Uh, so on the seal is all the old North Church, um, and uh, and the two lights, and uh, uh, again Paul Revere's on his horse, ready to go. Okay. Um, now another one. One of the themes that go through a lot of these is um, is the Minutemen, and you know their famous symbol. In fact, the Minutemen, we all know that one, but that's in so many of these, and the um, and the plow is in some of them. There's one here, very interesting you could talk about, which really I think shows some of these themes. This is um, River Edge, New Jersey, you'll see on the screen here. This, this, tell, this incorporates a lot of the similar themes in, in a lot of them. Um, what can you say about this one? River Edge um, uh, was, uh, is a town where uh, Washington's army had to escape. Uh, they thought they were safe in New Jersey, um, quartered in uh, Fort Lee. Uh, they had just been chased out of New York. They lost the Battle of Long Island. They lost several other battles. Uh, and they were on their way uh, to essentially escape Howe and his army. They found out that the British had actually landed in New Jersey and um, they had to evacuate Fort Lee. They left there with their campfires burning. They left with uh, most of their equipment there. They had to uh, escape across River Edge. Okay. So they celebrate their participation with the uh, uh, revolutionary style rifle uh, and the other symbols uh, of the American Revolution. Okay, now, I, now, I don't know how close this is um, to River Edge, but there's another one here that has a whole story behind it. It's called Gloucester, New Jersey, which you'll see on the screen. Tell us now who, who that is, or do they know who that is? I guess that's they, the question. <laughs> they don't know who that is. But what's the story behind this one? Um, Clauston, New Jersey is right on the Hudson River. It's right at the uh, Palisades. So this is why Washington thought he was safe. Uh, but General Howe landed there and there was a loyalist that showed them a path up uh, to actually climb the Palisades. Uh, okay. And this farmer on his, uh, got on his plow horse uh, without a saddle and he rode to warn Washington and General Greene that the British had landed and they were coming to get them. Okay. Uh, he's an unknown, the unknown horseman uh, the Paul Revere of New Jersey. Okay. Well, let's talk about one here that's, again, all these have, had, all these have such a story behind them. I was telling Martin before we started, if we talked about all 219 in the book, we'd have like a little mini-series <laughs> here with all these stories. But now here's one that, again, has a story behind it. 
um, that you'll see on the screen. It's Beacon, New York. What's and that's I didn't know that they used these signal fires. Tell us about this, this one here we're going to be seeing. Well, the Hudson River Valley was uh, very strategic. Uh, so Washington always protected that area. And uh, the British tried a couple times to divide the colonies by uh, capturing essentially the control of the Hudson River mm -hmm. Valley. So Washington had set up a series of uh, ways to warn uh, what the British were up to. And these were beacon fires that were on top of the mountains on each side of the of the Hudson River. So uh, Beacon eventually was named for the Beacon fires that were set there. So they called it, that's why it's called Beacon. That's obviously. why it's called okay. Beacon. Now there's many here, again, we have so many we could talk about um, with all the states. What can you say about this one we'll see on the, uh, this had a little, this is another one with a little story behind it. In Connecticut, it's the city of West Haven, Connecticut. Now what's this guy looking out, it's, you know, with the, Telescope, not telescope. Yeah, that telescope. But what's, what's the story behind this one? Uh, the British were um, forge, uh, um, going up the Connecticut coast, uh, burning different uh, towns and villages. So at this seal celebrates a young, uh, I believe he, he was a teenager, who is the Paul Revere of Connecticut. He's warning that the British are coming to burn uh, the town, and in fact, that's what they did. Well, the, the, one of the things that, from the book. You know, we have all these iconic stories, Bunker Hill, Paul Revere, Declaration, Tea Party. There was so many of all these things. It is very, uh, how did, um, why aren't these things more known, I guess I should say. <laughs> uh, I mean, I guess they're known in local, in their areas, because yeah, in some of your travels, you, you come up with, um, oh, you said some of these um, municipalities have, yearly celebrations of, of a lot of these things. Exactly, or statues of these heroes, um, mm -hmm. annual events that occur. <clears throat> Excuse me, that the, what, what seems to happen is though his, history is written from the, uh, maybe the 10,000 foot level, if you will. So it was the major events that occurred that get written up in the history books. Mm -hmm. And some of these events, even though they were important to that town and the local town citizens participated, they didn't affect the larger outcome of the war in a way that um, gets written up by the by the uh, historians. Well, here's one that was written up. Um, this is Charleston, Massachusetts, which was where the Battle of Bunker Hill was fought. So we're going to be seeing this one. Now, is that the Bunker Hill Monument right, right on there? It is. Okay. Um, now, Charlestown is no longer even a municipality. It was taken over by Boston. But I found that they had a seal when they were a city. Uh, this, so is seal, I, this is the seal. That's the seal, seal of the okay. city that's uh, now extinct. I think I've been there. It's, it's, it's literally, it's almost like, it's like right in the middle of a town. I mean, you go up these streets and it's just, yeah. it's literally, a, you think you're going to be out in the field somewhere, but it's right, it, there's it houses was, like all around it. All around it. It's it was not overlooking even, the, the city. It's not, it's not even a very big hill, really. No, it was just overlooking the uh, city at the time, which was, uh, of course, very small. Yeah, um, this one here is, a, again, very striking, as, as most of these are. You gotta, we have this book in the library. I have to come in and look at it. Um, the Borough of Fort Lee. What, what can you say about this one? It's got the, there's a monument on there, but again, uh, until I read this book, there's a lot went on in New Jersey. I keep bringing New Jersey up, but uh, what's, what's this, what, tell us about this one. Well, Fort Lee is again where the troops were garrisoned. Uh, General Green was there, and one of the soldiers that was there, in fact, was Thomas Paine. Oh, okay. Um, and so this uh, this rock is there. Uh, this the the seal is an illustration of a rock that's there with the soldiers looking out over the mm -hmm. rock. Okay. Um, and again, Fort Lee is one that has a an annual celebration, um, and it's uh, they have entitled it uh, "Retreat to Victory." All right. Now here's one in New York State. It doesn't look like it was made back in the 1700s. But um, it's a kind of a busy one, but it's, it, it's one of these ones that's probably more modern, but hearkening back of Westmoreland, New York, that you're going to see on the screen. What, what is all that going on in there? <laughs> well, I put a few in here that happened before the Revolution, because uh, in Westmoreland, New York, uh, James Dean was a settler uh, who uh, learned the Oneida language, mm -hmm. who was adopted by them, was a missionary to them, and uh, uh, very instrumental, along with Reverend Kirkland, in having the Oneidas uh, choose the Patriot side. Okay. So the uh, uh, the Iroquois Nation actually uh, this became a civil war for them. 
four of the tribes chose the British in the Loyalist side. Two of the tribes, the Oneidas and the Tuscaroras, chose the American side. Oh, okay. So they became what the, what they referred to as the first allies. Okay. Well, speaking of the uh, Native Americans, you have included in your book, um, I guess, the, the symbol of the Oneida, the Oneida Nation, which you'll see on the screen here. Tell us about um, what, what does all that mean? Well, more to the, the point might be the story behind the Oneida Nation. Polly Cooper was uh, a member of the Oneida tribe who, with uh, several dozen braves, went to Valley Forge with uh, bushels and bushels of corn to help feed the starving soldiers. Mm -hmm. uh, eventually, the braves had to return to defend their homeland, but Polly Cooper stayed. Uh, she also became uh, acquainted with uh, Martha Washington, and at one point she admired a shawl uh, that they had seen, so Martha Washington bought it for her. Mm -hmm. The Oneidas say that that uh, shawl is still in possession of Polly Cooper's descendants. Okay. Um, well, here's another one. Again, there's so, there's so many we could talk about, and I guess I should tell people at this point that Marvin's going to be here on um, Wednesday night, November 9th here in the library with a PowerPoint. He's going to be talking about more than we're talking about here. If you want to come in and um, you know hear a little story behind all these. Now here's one, um, Bloomfield, Connecticut. Again, it's got the drum and the gun. Tell us about um, the little stories behind this one. Um, in Bloomfield, there were some Coopers uh, who were barrel makers at one point mm -hmm. who became drum makers. Uh, so they uh, these drums were famous uh, throughout the colonies, and Bloomfield, because they were headquartered there, because they were manufactured there, has uh, put the, uh, the drum on their seal along with uh, a rifle. Now, there's no direct evidence uh, that uh, the drums were used in the Revolution. There's pretty much anecdotal evidence, mm -hmm. uh, but no proof, okay. uh, but it's there. How did you, um, tell us about the research that went into getting, I know you did some traveling, but how did you find you know, all these seals and little stories behind all of them? I'm, your... I'm, kind, <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of hoping that I gathered them all, but uh, it was fairly easy to uh, find uh, where the battles occurred, mm -hmm. find out which municipalities exist there today, and then the surrounding cities, county, towns, and villages. And then you began looking at their seals, and then calling up the local historians okay. uh, to describe the seal. And in some cases, they have a complete story on it. And uh, as we discussed, they have celebrations every year uh, to celebrate their participations. In other communities, they have the seal, but they, they have no information they don't. on when the seal was adopted, who drew it, or the significance beyond what the illustration itself shows. I mean, they don't know what's, what something might mean, what might mean in it. Yeah, because most uh, seals, when somebody when somebody draws it and submits it and it's adopted, there's a specific meaning to almost everything on the seal. Yeah, I know in um, one of the ones we're not showing, there's a, there's a lot that have the first, um, I think Saratoga, it shows, I think, the surrender of Burgoyne. The and in the background, you just it's, it's sort of, not a main, in the background is, is one of the, is the 13 star, the 13 star flag. What's... Um, well, the, uh, the county of Saratoga has the battlefield, that and then the town of Saratoga has the surrender. Okay. Uh, so I, uh, in the book itself, I arrange the book chronologically by the events that, that are depicted mm -hmm. in the seals. Okay. Now, you, you do include in here, besides these municipalities, you do, and there's a little bit in here, the Great Seal of the U.S., uh, the Marine Corps is in here. Um, do, do some of them have anything to do with the revolution? Or? Well, what I found fascinating is that the Army, Navy, and Marines were all created before we had a Declaration of Independence. Well, I know the Marine one, it says. Um, that was in the 1775, was it? In 1775. Yeah, okay. and, yeah. they all, and what about the Great Seal of the United States? Everyone sort of knows what that is. Well, but. shortly after the Declaration of Independence, we, the committee was uh, set up to draw a seal, a new seal for the country. Uh, but the, uh, uh, the first several uh, designs were rejected. Um, so they just kind of let that go, and they kept revisiting it, and they rejected each design. Now it's 1782. We've essentially won the war, and now the, uh, the negotiations are going on for a new treaty. Now we need a seal.
Okay. Uh, so finally, the seal was adopted in uh, in 1782. All right. Well, as you can as you can see, all these seals of municipalities and I guess organizations, they all have fascinating stories behind them. They're all in this book, celebrating the Revolutionary War, municipal symbols of a free country. And we only gave a small sampling that you were watching on the screen, but Marvin's going to be here again Wednesday night, November 9th, with a lot more. And he's going to be showing a little PowerPoint, showing the um, seals and the stories behind them. So thank you for coming again. And my pleasure. We will see you next time on Meet the Author. Thank you.